Today this we're going to finish off the side rails uh, part two. Um, a few years ago and how most people will start off by doing this um, you'll work off the floor you'll have uh, axle stands to hold the side rails up you'll have clamps and this that and the other it, and use squares and all the rest of it to build your buggy up. Um, these days I tend to use a jig it's a lot more accurate, it saves a lot of time setting it all up and everything because everything is set. Uh, it's, set it's already preset to the swan next what I make and uh, it makes life a lot easier if you can make a jig up for your side rails. And not only that, once you've made your jig up, if you ever make more buggies, you've got half the battle done. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you around the jig what I've made up. Okay, so here's there. the jig. It's basically two pieces of channel um, bolted on there. This part is dead square to that part. And I've got centre lines marked along the centre of this, also along the centre of that. Um, it's all bolted on there. And on the ends, we've got a plate. It's got two holes in. One is for the Bigfoot wheels, for when I'm setting up a buggy for the Bigfoot wheels. And this one, as we're making a barrow buggy, this one's set up for the barrow wheels. So, we put the axle in there, we bolt it on. We square it up, using a square off the centre line, against a mark on the axle itself. And then we bolt the, bolt the, uh, the plates onto the axle and then align all the side rails up. For the side rails we have a, a centre bit which is fully adjustable by this this part here. For the different widths of buggies I can adjust these in and out both sides and then there's a little cup there with adjustable part on the top for raising it up higher or lower. One of the most important parts is this part here. This is the part what uh, I fixed the swan neck to obviously. Um, it's set at the angle what I have my swan neck so you can see there one size higher than the other that's all clamped down everything's in the center I clamp my plates on there bolt them on uh, the beauty of doing it this way is when I start welding I weld the whole uh, frame while it's all clamped on and everything stays square to hold these rails into position I'm using uh, a sash clamp that squeeze and nips the uh, rails in together onto that um, then plates and on the top here I've just got a little jig which holds the side rails to the right width that I want which is the same as the back whatever the width is at the back is what I make the width at the front here and that is basically it it's just uh, on some uh, temporary legs what I can just screw in and off so I can move it all out of the way when I'm not using it and that's my jig so uh, what we'll do now is we'll start tacking it all up. You want plenty of tacks on it. Try and get it on uh, top, bottom and front and back of each tube. And then once it's all tacked up, we can then, with everything still clamped on, we can then weld it all up in position. Um, some, of the, some of the positions are a bit awkward, but I'd rather it be awkward and all the plates and everything stay square and as I... That's all now tacked up, um, everything's clamped, it's tacked up all the way around each tube, so now all that's left is to uh, weld it up.
welds around there. Like I said before, it's uh, it can be very awkward um, doing it in a jig, especially welding it in a jig like this. Um, it's much easier welding it on a bench, but at least I know that when this is clamped the side, when this is clamped the swan neck up, the swan neck will be perfectly true just by doing it like that otherwise you'd have to be very careful and, uh, and and the swan neck could be over a few degrees and then you've just got to cut it and do it all over again so at least when I do it this way I do it once and once is right okay so what we've done here is we've still got the buggy on the jig um, we've put a seat in I always like to put a seat in just to double check everything is right and I come to the uh, backrest brackets and so you see where the seat is and we push hard against it and we see where the backrest plate needs to go. Um, we've got a good two inches of various holes along the backrest plate so we've got that much adjustment anyway. But um, I like to sort of put it, once the pilot is uh, pressed hard against the seat, so the backrest lines up with about the second hole. And then if we need to move the seat back or forwards, we've still then got a bit of adjustment. So that's what we'll do now. So we've marked, we've marked the position onto the, onto the tube. We've crossed that over to this tube as well. So we've got all, we're all marked out, ready to go. And that's where the backrest plates will go. Side rails done. It's got the uh, the backrest plates on there. It's got plates on the front and the back of them for the axle and the swan neck. So all that's left to do now is let that cool down in the jig. Everything is being held, so it can't go anywhere. Um, wait until that cool down. Release all the bolts and buff it up. Get it all nice and shiny again. And uh, that's the way I do the side rails to finish them off. So. Uh, like I said, you can either have a go, either make a jig up yourself, depending on it, if you're going to make one buggy or if you're going to make five or six buggies, because generally, once you've made one, you'll definitely want to make another one again. It's that addictive, unfortunately. You'll find tweaks, you'll find uh, things what you don't like about your buggy and you'll want to improve it. And so making a simple jig like this is saves a lot of time, saves marking out on the floor, um, saves squares, saves axle clamps, saves all sorts of things. Um, and that's it. So I hope you'll have a go at these and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good day. Polished up.